So with this assignment, we are going to use the CC Reports spreadsheet from the assignment link. You need to save that to your computer and put your initials after it. And then there's also um, a PDF file of information attached to the assignment that you can use to help you complete the assignment. This video is just supplementary because sometimes it helps people to be able to see rather than have to read everything that they need to do. So we've been talking about or using relative cell references in our formulas. So what that means is when we put cell names into a formula and we fill down or across, it completes the formula for us. And so it changes columns and rows as you fill down or across. So when we say that we're using a relative cell reference, it means it's relative to the position in the formula. What we're going to move into is working with a specific location and we want to use that particular cell every time as we work with a formula. That's called an absolute cell reference. So again, it refers to a specific location. So just to give you an example, let's take a look at this first um, example for Cedar View Construction. So we can see we have customers, um, what these companies, um, what we've planned to spend with them, and what our actual expenses are going to be. And so if we were to take a look at that and say, okay, I want a 10% increase. So the first thing that I'm going to take a look at here with that 10% increase is you're going to look at that and say, well, why is she doing 1.1? Because a 10% increase would be 0.1, which is true. But in this particular formula, you are having to take it times itself to get the answer so that you don't have a two-step problem. So I'm just going to go into the actual cell in cell C3, type equals, and so what I want to do is I want to take my planned expenses and I'm going to take that times, or I'm going to take B3 and I'm going to multiply that by this 1.1. And if I click on that cell, the cell name is B12. If I press enter and I fill that down, you're going to notice that I get a bunch of garbage. So I'm going to undo that. What happened is this is a relative cell reference because as I fill B3 down, it's going to go to B4, B5, B6, B7. As I fill B12 down, it's going to go B13, 14, 15, 16. So you can see that there's nothing there for it to multiply by. Another way to take a look at that if I filled that down, remember you could do control tilde control grave accent mark, it's that key next to your number one key. And so you can take a look at that and see what happens when it fills it down. So that's relative. I'm going to again undo that. I want to use this formula, but I want to make sure I'm multiplying by the 1.1 every time. So I'm using an absolute cell reference. And so for a, a cell reference to be absolute, you have to put a dollar sign before the column and a dollar sign before the row. And so now when I do that and I press enter, I can come back and I can fill down and now I have answers. If I do my control tilde or control grave accent mark, I can see now I multiplied by this cell every time as I filled down. So that's an absolute cell reference. So let me go ahead and undo that. Um, if I were at the relative cell reference, um, let me take the dollar signs out of here quick and I will just show you what you can do with that. So you have the option of using a function key, which is your F4 key in this case. If you press F4 once, Notice how it puts the dollar signs around your column and your row. If you press F4 again, now you have a relative column but an absolute row. Now you have an absolute column but a relative row. And now you're back to a relative cell reference. So I'll press that F4 key to put my dollar signs around it. Press Enter. Fill that down. Whoops, not move it, but fill it. And there we go. 
The only thing that we would have left to do would be to format it to be consistent with this. So we would want to make sure that we applied that accounting format with no decimals. Whoops. There we go. To that cell. So that's an example of absolute cell reference. We're going to continue working with absolute cell reference as we take a look at these next two problems. So let's take a look at the employee training. I want the weighted average. So I don't want to just take the average across. I want to weight it. So this tells me that plumbing is worth 20%, electrical is worth 30%, and carpentry is worth 50%. So the first thing I have to do is figure out what is the average for each one of these testing areas that my company's testing me on. So we know because we've learned how to do averages, we can simply go from the home tab, we can come to the auto sum button, we can choose average, it's going to write the formula for me. I, um, it's average B17 through B22. I press enter, then I'm going to fill this across. So this is an example of an abs or a relative cell reference. Because if I take a look at that, it filled across for me. So that's a relative cell reference. What I'm going to do here in the weighted average is I'm going to compute or figure um, what that average is. And it's going to be based on um, the absolute cell reference. And so to do that, I need to know the weighted average. So equals, and what is it that I want to figure out? I want to take um, B24, which is the 20%, but I want to make it absolute. So I'm going to press the F4 key. And then I'm going to use my multiplication symbol and take that times B17. So that's relative because I want it to change as I fill it. And to that, I'm going to add C24. C24. And again, I need it absolute, so I press the F4 key. And I'm going to multiply that by C17 because I'm going to take it times the electrical score. And then I'm going to add to that D24. Again, I need to make that 50% absolute, so I press the F4 key. And I take that times B24. Oops, sorry. B17. Nope. <laughs> sorry. D17. There we go. So basically what I'm doing is I am taking my 20% times the 76 because that's worth 20% of my overall score. I'm taking the 30% times the 80% because that's worth 30% of my overall score. And I'm taking the 50% times, I can't remember the number under here, 84% because that's worth 50% of the overall score. And then I press enter. And so my weighted average is an 81%. So when you take a look at that formula, it can be a little overwhelming. And then you simply fill it down. Now you might say, okay, what's the big deal? Well, just let me show you this. If I just put average up here and I compute the average by doing my auto sum and just these three, plumbing, electrical, and carpentry, and press enter, look at the difference. So it's not always going to be different, but in some cases it could be. Look at here. Here it's, it's the weighting is more beneficial than just the straight average. Here the weighting is more beneficial than just the straight average. You know, if my pay increase, if a bonus was based on my weighted average, that's great. If I based it just on my overall average, I wouldn't get as much. So that's why we're working with the weighted average. Um, and you look at grades that way too. I weight my grades. Some instructors just do total points. Sometimes weighted averages can be more beneficial. So again, it's just another example of using an absolute cell reference. 
Um, I want to give you one more example of using the absolute cell reference, and that's working with payroll. We work with payroll all the time. And if you don't know how to figure your payroll, you should. So the first thing we want to know is, okay, so what's my gross pay? We can see hourly wage, hours, and overtime. Well, my gross pay is going to be, um, let's see, we're going to take cell B29, and we're going to multiply that by C29, and we're going to add to that, I need to figure out my overtime. So I'm going to take B29 again, and I'm going to multiply that by um, B36, which is one and a half times. But I need to make that an absolute value, so I press my F4 key, and then I'm going to multiply that by D29, which is two hours worth of overtime. So to to calculate your gross pay, you need to take your hourly, your regular salary, so $55 times 40 hours, plus I need to add to that my overtime. So I have two hours of overtime at one and a half my hourly wage. So then we will close that in parentheses. I forgot a set of parentheses here. And then we just press enter. And so this is my gross salary. I can fill that down. The nice thing is once you figure out a formula, you only have to do it once. We need to compute our withholding tax. So our withholding tax rate is 28%. And so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to type equals E29 because I figure my withholding on my gross salary. And I'm going to multiply that by E36. But again, I need to do an absolute value. So I press the F4 key. And then I can press enter and I can fill that down. So I have $622 withholding. I'm going to figure Social Security. I'm going to use the same thing. When I do Social Security, we're going to do equals E29. And we're going to multiply that gross salary times this rate, the absolute value. So we are going to use H36. Make sure you press your F4 key so that you get the absolute value and then you should be able to fill that down. Now, what I really want to know is how much is my paycheck going to be, and that's our net. So we're going to do equals. We're going to take E29, which is our gross salary, and we have to subtract from that whatever F29 plus G29 is, because what we're doing is we're adding up the withholding in Social Security because those are our deductions. And whoops, I apologize. Um, F29 plus G29, oh, <laughs> I forgot to subtract it, put the negative sign in there, there we go. And so, whew, out of $2,300, I'm only bringing home $1,500, so I guess the government gets a little bit of that paycheck. But that's a little, that's just an example, um, again, these are all three examples on how you can use absolute cell reference.